wa maulana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Rabbi syrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqadatan min lisani yafqaw qawli Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh We ended off last week with the different types of impurities or what is considered unclean or dirty and so on This week we start off with the ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, refers to in Suratul Ma'idah, ayah number three. Suratul Ma'idah, ayah number three. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ba'd a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir wajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim, hurrimat alaykum al-maytatu wa-dhamu wa-lahmu al-khinziri wa ma'uhilla li ghayri allahi bihi wal-munkhaniqa. والموقودة والمتردية والنطيحة وما أكل السبع إلا ما ذكيتم وما ذبح على النصب وأن تستكسموا بالأزلام ذلك فسق اليوم يأس الذين كفروا من دينكم فلا تخشوهم واخشوني اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم وأتممت عليكم نعمتي ورضيت لكم الإسلام دينا فمن اضطر في مخمصة غير متجانف لإثم فإن الله غفور رحيم. The ayah comprises of many things that we would know on what is not permissible. So the ayah starts off with حرمت عليكم meaning prohibited for you. Right? Prohibited for you. Just give me a minute. Let me just fix this thing. Yes, I am. Right. The ayah starts off with what is prohibited. Prohibited for you. Sorry, everybody. Let's just get the. Uh, The ayah starts with what is prohibited for you. First of all, the prohibited to al maytatu meaning dead animals, right? Wa damu uh, uh, and blood. Wa lahmul khinzir, the flesh of swine or pig or the hog, is forbidden. Wa ma uhilla li ghairillah bihi. And whatever has been sacrificed for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do we say? We say, when we slaughter, we say, Bismillah. So we are doing that in the name of Allah. So if a person comes and he's slaughtering in the name of something else, then that's shirk. So therefore, other than that, uh, uh, other than the person saying, Bismillah, I'm sorry, I'm having a problem with the social media here tonight. Right. The mixler is not going to work tonight. Um, so whatever is slaughtered or sacrificed for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be considered shirk because we do things in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then also, any animal that has been strangled is haram for you. Any animal that has been strangled is also haram, prohibited. Or by a violent blow. You can't go take a five pound hammer and then you kill the animal with a hammer and then think that is permissible. It's not permissible. Then also, any animal that has fallen down, fallen down the mountain or yani, uh, any animal that had a headlong fall, 
and the animal is dead by the time that you get there, then it means that that animal is not permissible for you. Or by the goring of the horns. The goring of the horns, meaning that two animals have a fight, and then the one kills the other one. So you come on the scene, and you find this animal there, lying dead. Khalas, it's not permissible. As well as from that which a wild animal has eaten. So, meaning that the animal has been killed by another animal, and it has now been eaten by that animal and is dead. But if an animal had killed another, not killed him, has attacked another animal, and you found that it's alive, then you can still do the, the uh, slaughtering of that animal, if it's alive. In other words, once it's dead, it's dead. You can't have it. And then Allah Ta'ala says, وَأَن تَسْتَقْسِمُوا بِالْأَزْلَامِ Now, Aslam is, is in, in English, they would call it divining arrows. Meaning it is considered something holy. Remember all of these things is prohibited. No? Divining arrows me is, is, is a thing, a suspicious practice, a superstitious practice that was common amongst the pagan Arabs, the non-believing Arabs. And that was way back in the seventh century. Maybe it's still around today. But what is the purpose of that is that it's an effort to seek the knowledge of the future through a suspicious means. So what, meaning they would do what? They would then say, um, I'm doing this uh, arrow. On the one arrow they would show, uh, right there, God permits it. For example, right? God permits this on the one arrow. On the next arrow they would put, God doesn't permit it. And the last arrow would be blank. So they would shoot all three arrows, and whatever arrow goes the furthest, then that is what God wants. So that is superstition. And we don't take to superstition. Um, Allah Ta'ala then says, Dalikum fisk. If you're involved with any of these things, let's go through it again. You don't, it's uh, dead animals, blood meaning there's blood on the floor or whatever the case may be, it's not permissible. Blood, the flesh of pigs, um, that which has been slaughtered for other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, those animals that have been killed by strangulation or that has been killed by a violent blow against them or that which has a headlong fall or two animals that were busy fighting each other, goring of horns. Or that which a wild animal has eaten and it died. Right? And then also that which has been sacrificed on stone altars. You know, people go to uh, wherever they sacrifice and it's like a ritual that they do and they would do a sacrifice on there. All of that stuff, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ذَلِكُمْ fisk. This is grave disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Grave disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is sinful, it means you've gone astray. Then Allah ta'ala says, الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَةِ وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ الدِّينَ This day I have perfected your deen for you. This day I have, um, I have completed your deen for you, I've perfected your deen for you. وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمُ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينًا وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي And I've perfected your deen for you, and I've chosen the deen of Islam for you. Then Allah Ta'ala says, فَمَنِ اتُّرَّ غَيْرَ فِي مَخْمَصَةٍ غَيْرَ مُتَجَانِفٍ لِإِتْمٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمٌ Then if you are Compelled in a situation, there's an, a, 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 a qaida in usul al-fiqh that says, ad-darurat to be hal mahdurat Meaning that if you get into a situation where you cannot other than do that. So, for example, the old thing that we learned in the madrasas, 
if you are somewhere in the desert and there's a pig running around and you're going to die of hunger, then it means that you can slaughter him, you can eat him in order to sustain yourself, to survive. So if you are in that situation, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ rahim, Then know verily that Allah Ta'ala is all forgiving. So that is a whole list of things that we have. In a hadith narrated, in terms of this ayah, حُرِّمَتْ عَلَيْكُمُ الْمَيْتَةُ that prohibited for you is dead animals. Jabir radiallahu ta'ala anhum, Jabir radiallahu anhum, he says, أَنَّهُ سَمِعَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُولْ عَمُ الْفَتْحِ he, uh, he says, I heard the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says in the year of the conquest, wa huwa bi Makkah, and he was in Makkah, inna Allah wa Rasulahu harrama bay' al khamar wal maytata wal khinziri wal asnam. Allah Ta'ala has prohibited the selling of any intoxicants, dead animals, the pig, as well as the idols. فَقِيلَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ So one of the Sahaba said, أَرَأَيْتَ شُحُومَ الْمَيْتَةِ فَإِنَّهُ تُطْلَى بِهَا السُّفُنْ وَتُدْهَنُ بِهَا الْجُلُودِ وَيَسْتَصْبِحُ بِهَا النَّاسِ So they said, Ya Rasulullah, let's talk about the fat. Because the fat of the dead animal is used for greasing the ships. It is used for greasing the hides of animals. And it's also used for making oils for lamps. So can we use that? The Sahaba asked. Can we use that for that purpose? And again the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, La huwa haram. Then the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam then said, Thumma qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa inda dhalik, qatala Allahu al-Yahuda, inna allaha lamma harma alayhim shukhumaha, jamaluhu, thumma ba'uhu, فَأَكَلُوا ثَمَنَهُ Says the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam then to them, May Allah curse the Yahud, the Jews. Allah had made these fats haram for them. So what did they do? They then uh, 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 cooked the fat. In other words, they melted it. And then they sold it. They sold the fat and then they sold it and they got from the Prophet, they ate their food. They use that in other words. So therefore, you cannot even get involved in the selling of all of the stuff. You cannot be anywhere. You can't be the driver. You can't be the packer. You can't be anything involved. And many Muslim people have come in the past and have asked, can I do this? Can I do that? In terms of that, that you stay away from, right? You try and find another job in terms of that. So that is as far as that is concerned. Now we carry on with this najasat. The najasat is broken into two categories. The one category the ulama is in agreement of, and there's 14 of that. The next category, they disagree with what is uh, permissible uh, in terms of that. So the first one of those 14 that they agree on is all animals that are dead that we've just covered with the ayah. All animals that are dead but on land. Those that are in sea is halal. It's permissible. Why is that? Because of the hadith of the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says huwa tuhur ma'uhu al-hal maytatuhu that whatever is in the sea is clean and the dead of it is halal. That's number one. The second one that all ulama agree with that it is not permissible um, is blood, gushing. So and we, last week we mentioned that if you're going to slaughter a sheep or whatever and all the blood that comes out there, um, that blood that falls on the ground and so on, it's prohibited for you, it is haram for you um, when you are busy slaughtering. But we said that the blood that still runs within the animal after you slaughtered it, that is halal. Provided obviously that the slaughtering has been done in terms of sharia. So what do we say when we slaughter? 
We say Bismillahi Wallahu Akbar. Bismillahi Wallahu Akbar. When we saw, so Bismillahi in the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and Allah Taala is great. So you are doing this. You can add the following: Allahumma hada minnak wa ilik. Oh Allah, this is from you and to you. Hada anni. Oh, an, and mention the name. Meaning that that is from me, hada anni. Or you can say, uh, let's take the two of them. Or you can say, hada an shakir, hada an iman, and so on. So that is where you mention the name. So the complete one would be, Bismillahi wallahu akbar. Allahumma hada minnak wa ilayk. Hada anni, that is for, for me. Or you're going to say, Hada an Muhammad. I slaughtered this on behalf of Muhammad. Right? Right. That covered the blood. As far as the khinzir, the pig and the swine is concerned, another dalil on its najasa, that it is uh, impure, uh, are the following three things. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-An'am, ayah number 145, Say, O Muhammad, that I do not find anything that is haram except illa an yakuna maytatan, except that it's a dead animal, daman masfuhan, or blood gushing out on the floor, on the, on the ground. And then the third one, is what we are dealing with here, says the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, lahma khinzirin fa innahu rijas, says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fa innahu rijas, the flesh of the pig, rijas meaning that it is najis, it is najis. Number four and five we are quite familiar with, it's the urination of the human race, um, as well as the feces or the popos, right? That we're familiar with. Number six, al-madhi. Madhi, we said it's a fluid, a thin fluid um, that is discharged before ejaculation. So in other words, it developed because of desire. So that would also be considered impure. And we discussed in the cleansing on, in terms of that. Then number seven, al-wadi. Now, wadi is an illness. Um, it is called urinary tract infection, UTI. It is something that uh, it comes out, it is thick, it is white, and it's mainly in males. Um, comes out if a person has uh, urinated, then this follows it, or ex after extreme fatigue. So that wadi is also considered uh, impure. Then number eight and number nine is the urine and the dung or manure or droppings of, of animals that we do not eat. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, and, and this hadith we covered in the, in the Tahara. Remember when the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam when uh, needed to uh, relieve himself, then told him, get three stones. He came with two stones and a piece of dung. And the Nabi Islam took the two stones and threw the dung away and said that that is uh, najis or rix. The Nabi Islam used the word. Then number 10 is the meat um, of animals that we are allowed, that we are not allowed to eat also. The meat, we dealt with the urine and the uh, popos before this, now, or the dung and the manure, now we deal with the meat of animals that we don't eat. When it was Fatu Haibar, and, and, and remember, even if this is even slaughtered Sharan correctly, it is still haram. When it was Fatu Haibar and the Muslims had won the battle, 
The Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, then saw that there was a lot of fires that was going and whatever. Here's a nice important hadith that we can uh, want to connect it with a hadith that uh, Sheikh Nabil Majid had also sent me. Um, the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam sees all of these fires and asked them, what, what's happening? Why all the fires? So they said, ala lahmin, we're, we're cooking meat. So the Nabi Islam asked, what meat are you cooking? So they said, ala lahmil khumur al insiyya. The domesticated donkeys, donkeys that they used, they had slaughtered, and it's the meat of those donkeys. So the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam then orders them, ahrikuha waksuruha. Throw out all this food out of the pots and you break the pots. So one of them said, Ya Rasulullah, anuhrikuha wa nagsiluha. Can we throw the food away, the meat away, but can we clean the pot? And the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, O dhalik. Meaning, or oh, you may do so. Right? In another hadith, in Anas radiallahu anhu, qala asabana, okay, before we get there. So what is happening here is that there has been haram substance in the pot, in the utensil. And the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam had initially told them, break the pot, throw the meat out, break the pot, and then allowed them to wash it out. In another hadith, an Abi Thalab al Husni, an Nawqal, Ya Rasulullah, inna bi ardin ah bi ardi ahl al Kitab, fa nadbahu fi kudurihim wa nashrabu fi aniyatihim, fa kala Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, in lam tajidu ghairuha, farhaduha bil ma, wa fi riwaya bi Dawood. In wajatum ghayraha fakulu fiha washrabu wa in lam tajidu ghayraha farhaduha bil ma wa kulu washrabu. Al Imam al Nawawi, in terms of this hadith, then says, You call had al hadith, lama yakulu al fuqaha, mukhalif al fuqaha, lama yakulu al fuqaha, fa inna hum yakuluna inna hu yajuz, istamal al awan al mushrikin. إذا غسلت ولا كراها فيها بعد الغسل سواء وجد غيرها أم لا. So the second hadith, the Sahaba says to the Nabi عليه الصلاة والسلام, يا رسول الله, we find ourselves in the land of the of the non-believers. So we have the pots that we eat from, as well as the utensils that they have that we drink from. So What's the condition? So in the hadith, the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam then says, if try and find others. If you can't find others, then wash it out, and that is permissible for you. So Al-Imam al-Nawawi's comment is, he says, this hadith is, goes against what the ulama of fiqh says, because the ulama of fiqh says that if you have the parts of non-Muslims, then you just wash it out without having to look for other utensils. Then you just wash it out and you can use it. How does that affect us in terms of today? In today we go to holiday places. And then we come across utensils that are there. So in terms of this hadith that we've done, and in terms of the hadith that Sheikh Nabil had sent me, it would then be permissible only to wash it out. To wash it out, and then you can use those pots and the utensils that are there. Now, I am merely mentioning that as a means that it can be done. And the ladies that I've spoken to about this and told them, they said, no, 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 I'm not going to use that pot. I will take my own pots and whatever the case may be. But at least we must know that the permission is there. I'm not sure what you're going to do with a bride girlie, for example. Uh, because that is not going to be so easy to clean it. But if you can clean it, then it is fine. Then it should be okay. So, in terms of the hadith, domesticated animals, meaning the donkeys that we use, uh, 
uh, in the roads for ourselves and so on. We're not talking about those that are in the wild. We're not talking about also the zebra. We are talking that donkeys that is there, you can see the seriousness of that it is prohibited. For the first thing the Nabi Alisham says, break it, the pots. The next thing the Nabi says, you can wash it out uh, and so on. Uh, because it is, it is ridges, it is nudges. So therefore, that shows that the domesticated donkey, the meat is not permissible to eat. It is najasa. And you know that there was a, in, in London, they found a butcher out investigation uh, that the person was selling uh, horse meat from his butcher. And uh, yeah, and that's been going on for quite a while that he had sold the horse meat uh, from the butcher. The last one, or almost the last one, of what ulama agree with is that it is haram to eat meat where you cut it off from the animal while the animal is alive. If you cut a piece of an animal while it is alive, it is haram for you to eat it. The Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says, مَا كُتِعَ مِنَ الْبَهِيمَ وَيَحَيَّ فَهُوَ مَيْتَ Whatever is cut off from an animal that is alive, then it's considered dead flesh. Dead flesh, right? It is not permissible, and I don't know who's going to do something like that. But you've seen some evil things that happens in the world. There are places where they serve you fish, and uh, the fish, they fry the fish, the fish is alive, it's still kicking, and they serve you the fish in the plate and it is still kicking. So, I mean, that's a bit evil, no? But mankind, whatever flesh is cut from mankind is clean. Whatever flesh is cut. Why is that? Because of the hadith of the Nabi. And by the way, whether the person is alive or dead, the flesh is considered, you can't eat it. The Hanif is looking to me like, almost like, did you mean eat it? You can't eat it. We're just saying what is najis and what is not najis. <laughs> right? So the flesh of man, of the human race, if the piece of flesh is cut off, then that is clean, it is pure, whether the person is alive or dead. Whether the person is alive or dead. In actual fact, just going back to the, uh, to, to the previous uh, thing that we said, can you see how animal welfare comes into our deen? That you're not going to cut up an animal while that animal is alive. You'll have to wait. Now, in terms of janazas, we deal with this. From a burial perspective, on how you handle a janaza. Because the respect and honor that is shown to a person while they're alive the same honor and respect is shown to them after they had died. So the Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam says in the hadith, in al Muslim la yanjus. A Muslim is never najis. And um, Ibn Abbas says, al Muslim la yanjus hayyan wa la mayyitan. Whether he is alive or whether he is passed on, or she will always be clean. And then the last one where everybody is in agreement with is the blood of hate, the blood of nifas after the birth of a child, and then the blood of al-istihada, which is the uh, blood that comes out because of an illness. And that covers all of that which the ulama is in agreement with. We'll stop there and we'll go on next week on where ulama is not in agreement. And one of the things that they are not in agreement with, and we'll cover that next week, is the urine of a camel. The urine, urine of a specific camel. But we'll deal with that next week, inshallah ta'ala. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Let's go for questions.